The details matter, as does the discipline of attending to them, whether you're flying a plane, working, or investing for your future. However, few places bear life and death consequences when details are overlooked, as they do in the cockpit. Take a look at this missing man formation video clip where I'm performing the skyward break. I need to ensure the smoke is on, but I can't look away from the flight leader. It's crucial to confirm that everything is in place to deliver the intended outcome for the memorial. Hey, sensor, smoke on. Smoke's on. Sammy, can you confirm smoke on? Smoke on. Pop quiz. You've taxied into the run-up area for the pre-takeoff check, and you reach item 5, which states, Flight controls, free and correct. As you move the yoke through its full range of motion, from stop to stop, forward and aft, right and left, noticing the ailerons moving in opposite directions, you look at the left wing while the yoke is turned to the left, as if you are commanding a left bank in flight. What do you see? Is the aileron up or down? Many pilots don't instinctively know the answer to this question, which I'll share in a moment. This detail matters because the checklist says, flight controls, free and correct. If you don't ensure the controls are both free and correct, you haven't complied with the checklist. You must verify whether the flight controls are free to move fully and have good mechanical action and whether the control gust lock has been removed. It's also critical to ensure the controls are rigged correctly and that it's safe to fly. There have been numerous accidents over the years where pilots overlooked removing the control lock, then failed to properly execute the pre-takeoff checklist, which would have caught the error and prevented the ensuing crash. Getting back to the question, when the yoke is turned to the left, the left aileron is up. Those of you who immediately knew the answer to the question without having to think about it are probably saying, well, duh. However, the reality is that too many pilots don't know the answer or fully understand how the wing works. So let's have a quick review. This is a wing, and here's how the wing works as a quick reminder. You have the leading edge, you have the trailing edge. If you draw a line from the leading edge to the trailing edge, that's called the cord. The angle of the cord here to the direction or airflow of the air is the angle of attack. Notice this airplane, as it sits on the ground, would have a positive angle of attack of a few degrees. So this airplane would create lift in this direction. Now, as you're flying along, the airflow hits the wing. And some air has to travel a little further over the top because of the angle of attack of the wing. So you get a bunch of air moving over the top and a bunch of air moving over the bottom. Now the air has to travel further over the top and it's gonna go faster and reach the back of the wing before the airflow on the bottom. And here's why. Bernoulli's principle. As air moves faster, it creates low pressure at right angles to the flow. And as it moves over the top of the wing, it's also being curved upwards due to the coanda effect of the airflow following the shape of the wing. So as this air moves up, all this air above it is resistant to moving because it goes all the way up into outer space. So it creates faster flow due to conservation of energy. If the air is being squeezed down because it can't move up infinitely, it has to go faster. The energy of the airflow has to go somewhere. So we've got Coanda, we've got Bernoulli, and we've got the airflow being pushed off the back of the wing at an angle downward. Now Newton's third law says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if the air is moving down, the wing must be moving up, and that's how lift is created. So what happens when we move the aileron down? Well, now the trailing edge is here, the leading edge is here. The cord line has changed angle of attack in relation to the airflow. So it's simply by moving the ailerons, we can increase the angle of attack of the wing. Now let's look at the bigger picture. Moving the ailerons changes the wing's angle of attack asymmetrically, which causes the plane to roll. Remember, the ailerons move in opposite directions. To roll left, the yoke is turned left, which deflects the left aileron up, while the right aileron is deflected down. This results in more lift on the right wing and the plane rolls to the left. To roll right, 
The yoke is turned right, so the aileron on the left wing is deflected down, while the aileron on the right wing is deflected up. This results in more lift on the left wing, and the aircraft rolls right. When you are inverted, the ailerons work the same way. Left yoke or left stick still makes the plane roll left. Whether you're piloting a plane or navigating through daily challenges, understanding how details connect to the bigger picture is crucial. In the cockpit, this knowledge ensures safety. Everywhere else, it can determine success or failure. Whatever you're doing, the details matter, and getting them right can make all the difference. Fly safe.